Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you all this morning. And uh, it is just uh, lovely to be, uh, what did you say, the, the female voice among such illustrious and uh, uh, highly uh, well-respected uh, panel this morning. So I, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, and uh, my, my talk uh, this morning is going to be rooted really in my experience of working uh, in St. Mary's work that I absolutely loved, both as a teacher and as principal. So having worked in Catholic schools all my life, I'm going to declare right from the start that I'm a fan. Now, in Northern Ireland, as has been alluded to already, that's not a very popular position. When I Googled Catholic education in Northern Ireland, as you do when you're doing a talk, I got, among other things, a plethora of links telling me how delighted Liam Neeson is that a Catholic school in Northern Ireland has recently changed to integrated status. Now, he is one of many high profile people promoting integrated education. So I need to declare now that I'm a bit of a Liam Neeson fan. So I suppose I need to ask myself, is Liam right? Should we be delighted if our Catholic schools lost their Catholic identity and Catholic education was no more? And that's what we're discussing. So I'm not going to go over the details of how in the North we still manage to separate young people in every possible way known. We are where we are. The question is where do we need to go and what do our young people need in order to lead good and fulfilled lives and in what way can our education system do that and importantly can Catholic education play a role? Much has been written about reform of education uh, in recent years, and much has been written about the direction that it needs to travel in. The Department of Education is currently embarking on yet another review of education. Regardless of the findings of that review, as has been alluded to already, many politicians, policymakers, and commentators in Northern Ireland prefer a single education system that will educate all our young people together. This, they say, would not only save money, which is currently uh, wasted, as they describe it, on duplicating services, but they also believe that it would promote a less segregated, more cohesive society. And I think both Francis and Peter have uh, adequately um, addressed that. The decline of the church's influence on society here has its roots in the cultural revolution of the 60s. Some of you are far too young to remember it. Fueled by a quarter of a century of revelations about clerical abuse, and more recently, the horrific disclosures about what happened in mother and baby homes. So the result is not just a highly secularized society, but an increase in anti-Catholic sentiment. During my time at St. Mary's, I must have read thousands of those green P7 transfer forms. These showed a very strong parental preference for Catholic schools. Now, this is quite remarkable, given the fallen status of the Catholic Church over that time. So why do so many parents still place a high value on Catholic education? We know that Catholic schools in the North, as they do elsewhere, do very well in terms of outcomes. And just to highlight, because schools are about uh, examination performance, uh, the uh, Belfast Telegraph League tables of 2018 showed that all top 10 places were held by Catholic schools. And in 2019, nine out of the top 10 positions were held by Catholic schools. And it's not just grammar schools, our primary schools and our all ability schools do very well as well. Also, our disadvantaged pupils, pupils on free school meals do extremely well. And Catholic schools somehow year on year have managed to narrow that much talked about achievement gap. Many education systems around the world would love to have a sector with such high levels of performance. And as has been already mentioned, Catholic schools are about much more than high performance and examinations. And they succeed in so many other areas. And they also are very much about the formation of the individual. 
but it is worth looking at why Catholic schools do so well, since all schools in Northern Ireland follow the same curriculum and they all do the same exams. And I know many brilliant staff working in other sectors who do more or less the same things we do, and they do very well. So these very good schools should have caught up or even surpassed Catholic schools over time. And while they've made really good progress, Catholic schools, Catholic schools are still doing better. So this suggests that what Catholic schools do is not just about great teaching, great discipline and great structures. It is about their culture. It is about the values that inform what they do and how they do it. And of course, these values are rooted in the gospel. I'm going to mention a few of what I believe are the core principles of Catholic education. And as I mentioned, I'm not suggesting that other schools don't do similar things, but I think the difference is that these things are the very essence of Catholic schools. It is why they exist, and I think that makes a difference. <laughs> Firstly, Catholic education is Christ-centered, and every child is seen in the likeness and image of God with their own special talents. And Catholic schools believe that every child can learn and make it their mission to develop and nurture every child's talents as part of a faith community. Catholic schools are deeply rooted in their communities and in the parish, there's a real sense of belonging. Um, and it really, to paraphrase the African proverb, it really does take a whole community to educate a child. And this inclusive ethos supports children with special needs, it supports children with mental health problems, and it supports children from minority communities. Also, Catholic education has a clear moral purpose that teachers weave through the curriculum. This includes a sense of awe and wonder at creation, the preciousness and sanctity of life, and the need to work for the common good. And Laudato Si has challenged all of us to rethink our Catholic identity in terms of care of our common home and care of our neighbor. And it is a powerful resource that uh, allows Catholic education to help pupils understand what a fair and just world looks like, both locally and globally, and how they can play their part. Despite this, there is no doubt that Catholic education faces many challenges, and I think it needs to change in Northern Ireland to be of real benefit to society, while still remaining true to its core mission. And I'm going to outline some of the changes that I believe are necessary. I had a very long list, but I am watching my time, so I will uh, try and be brief. Catholic schools have always had a special calling to serve the poorest and most marginalized pupils. The current system of education, based on competition for pupils as well as examination success, adversely impacts on pup the very pupils Catholic education is supposed to prioritize. While academic selection means grammar schools have a very high academic standards, it also concentrates, as we all know, a very high proportion of disadvantaged pupils, pupils with special educational needs and so on, in non-selective schools. I speak from experience about the huge effort required in these schools to undo the effects of academic selection and ensure successful outcomes for these pupils. It was really heartening to see the uh, grammar schools, the Catholic uh, grammar schools, who um, chose not to use academic selection to admit pupils uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and I think the challenge now for Catholic education is to build on this and help these schools move away from academic selection permanently. In this way, disadvantaged pupils, pupils with additional needs, and those from minority groups will have equality of access and be welcome in all our Catholic schools. And Catholic education will be known for putting pupils first. Next, the family. Parents are regarded as the primary educators of their children, and Catholic schools are supposed to support children in handing on the faith. In an increasingly secular society, surely Catholic schools need more support if they are to do this well. And maybe there are other ways of supporting parents 
and maybe laity in parishes and technology could play a bigger role here. And staying with family, the church places a great importance on family. So should brothers and sisters be able to attend the same post-primary school if they so wish? Are single sex schools a relic from the past that is no longer fit for purpose? If you review the literature, you will find plenty of evidence that supports both sides of the debate. Catholic education needs to be sure that their schools don't contradict their core values and that they meet the needs of pupils in the 21st century. While Catholic education could be defended on the basis of parental choice and human rights, some do see it as divisive, perpetuating and exacerbating sectarian conflict. The murder of Lyra McKee and Derry and the Easter riots in Belfast are a stark reminder of just how fragile our peace process is. Whether denominational schooling is a cause or a symptom is something we are discussing here this morning. Uh, and it is worth uh, looking at that. 40 years ago, a group of parents opened the first integrated prime, uh, school to help uh, break down sectarian divisions. Now, I admire and respect what they have achieved. Yet with just 7% of pupils attending integrated schools, it is clear that integrated education has not grown as would have been expected. The shared education program was introduced in the wake of the peace process. This program involves schools working in cross community partnerships to deliver shared classes to improve education outcomes and to build community relations. Thousands of pupils and hundreds of staff have learned together over a sustained period of time and got to know each other. I find some of the best professional development was the collaboration that happened when staff from these different schools worked together. My work in shared education is some of the work that I take greatest pride in. No matter how well people do, unless they have learned to live, to work, and to be with those who are different from themselves, their education is incomplete. So I would like to pay tribute to all those who work with me locally and internationally. And I think it was lovely to see the start of a shared education campus in the Mavari recently. Catholic education needs now to seek out more ways of sharing resources and facilities with other sectors. And, and this is a, a big one, it needs to be able to persuade people that far from being a threat to a prosperous, inclusive society, Catholic education can be a major contributor to one. Another challenge for Catholic education and education in general is a decline in school enrollment. There has been a decline in primary school enrollment in the last two years, and this is set to continue. The NISRA population projections indicate that the school age population will fall by 40,000 uh, by 2043. Schools will close. I know CCMS have plans in place to progress amalgamations and closures. I often wonder if closing a small rural school is as cost effective as it looks. How do you cost the impact on those children and their community? I was for many years part of a dog eat dog survival of the fittest battle for enrollment as the school age population in Derry declined. Competition was the order of the day. It was and is the very antithesis of what Catholic education should be about. Of course, it was the primary and non-selective post-primary schools that withered out of existence. Grammar schools simply took more pupils and a wider range of ability. If Catholic education is to continue to be relevant to the needs, um, uh, to the needs of the community, it needs to remove this competition for pupils and manage the fall in pupil numbers in a fair and equitable way. Imagine the powerful learning networks of schools that would emerge if the competition was removed. There is much talk also about the 72,000 surplus places in school. And incredibly, this does not include those children with a statement of special educational needs. And these children often need more space 
nor does it allow for the learning support assistants who accompany them to class. Public education needs to speak up for these children, ensure they are included when the school's capacity is being considered and their learning and support assistance. And in light of the pandemic and social distancing, I think all schools will need extra space and Catholic education should be to the fore in uh, ensuring this. Uh, the um, challenges, these are just a few of the challenges that I think are uh, facing Catholic education in Northern Ireland. And there is uh, also the um, challenge of uh, initial teacher training. And I think just like in our schools, there is a lot more opportunity for the Catholic sector to work in partnership, uh, Peter, with many of the uh, other institutions, both in terms of sharing resources and uh, sharing expertise, and that that is something that uh, could be advanced on as well. Um, the, uh, finally, uh, then, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, last thing I'm going to say is uh, really I'm going to leave it all with Pope Francis, because he tells us very clearly that what we need to do to make Catholic education relevant in society, especially in a divided society, he says that education should train young people to be open and interested in the reality that surrounds them, capable of care and tenderness, free from the widespread prejudice that you must be competitive, aggressive, and hard towards others, especially towards those who are different. Now, I think if Catholic education here can clearly reflect the words of Pope Francis, then it can make not just a significant contribution to the well-being and fulfillment of individual pupils, but to the transformation of our divided society into a peaceful and prosperous one. Thank you very much.